point where they will never return. Nobody can disagree with me. Can anyone listening to this show tell me how 200,000 Syrian refugees, almost all of them Muslims, 80% of them young males, how are they going to enrich this society? Can anyone raise their hand and tell me how? Can you tell me how they're going to enrich the society? And can you also tell me why the psycho in the White House is not bringing in Syrian Christians, including some who are here already begging to be able to stay, allowed to stay here? Tell me why he's kicking the Christians out and bringing the Muslims in. Tell me why he wants more mosques and less churches. Tell me why. You can figure that out? You can't figure out what he's doing to your country? How do you let it happen? Uh, but we have trouble in the country. We all know that. But how many times can I say the same thing about the psycho in the White House? The man is an out-of-control psychopath. He knows that most Americans do not want the country flooded with immigrants to begin with. So now he triples down. Not only is he saying we're having more from Central America and Mexico, but now to top it off, he's bringing in 200,000 Muslim men from Syria. What sane country permits this without stopping the man in his tracks? They call him out. They throw him out. They make the Democrat Party stop it before it's too late. Why am I wrong in saying that? England has just said no to the EU demands that they take in hundreds of thousands of more young Muslim refugees. Why are so many men being brought in to the European nations? And who are the quislings in the EU who want to flood Europe with young Muslim men? Why are they bringing the armies in? They think they'll spare them at the end? Well, you see, the madness of liberalism has almost no bounds. It's a suicidal cult. At the end of the day, liberalism itself is a religion, and it's a suicidal religion. Everywhere you turn, Jerry Brown signing a euthanasia bill and acting as though it's something wholesome and good for the people. We know what it is. It's a death cult. Jerry Brown is leading a death cult here in the state of California, and, and typically, typically, progressives always hold up their madness as something progressive. And what do we, the people, do as we watch this going on? In the past, you could sort of ignore it. But now when you see the waves upon waves upon waves of mostly young, virile men coming into Europe, and now you see a president trying to do the same thing to America, and there's nobody stopping him. You have a bunch of old, weak, corrupt drunks on the Republican side. going to stop him. So he figures, why not do what I want to do? That's why that weekend he went from, we'll bring in 10,000 Syrians. Saturday morning it was 100,000. Sunday morning it was 200,000. The man was almost giddy. He was running it up the flagpole, as they used to say many years ago, to see what would happen. And guess what? There was no opposition. The drunk didn't even hear it. He was on a beach chair in, in Jacksonville. The gobbler didn't hear it. He was busy raising his turkeys somewhere in Kentucky. So where is the opposition? Ah, the people, they don't matter. We have no power. When did the people ever have power in a nation? Tell me when the people of a nation ever had power. Stop living in the fantasy world of the colonies. Arabic is fastest growing language in the USA by Julia Hahn of Breitbart. From Breitbart again, Le Pen. Europe's migrant flood equals barbarian invasions of the 4th century. From Fox News. ISIS touts baby boom as key to caliphate's future. Did you know that's what's going on? Did you know that these 7th century throwbacks are raping their way to a population explosion. Did you know that's what they're doing? The black-clad Nazi va vermin are raping their way across the Middle East and procreating with the captured brides. Not one word from the American goddesses of feminism. How to raise a jihadi baby. Key feature of ISIS publications. Sisters role in jihad. There's a picture of an infant in a cradle lying next to a pistol and a grenade. And in this country, we have a psychopath in the White House who wants to take away your right to bear arms. Let me tell you something. There was an actor a long time ago who said, you'll have to pry it out of my cold, dead hands. That should be your motto. Never give up your weapon. Never give up your weapon to one of the Nazis in this government. Never! It's the only reason that ISIS will never take over this country. It's because of an armed civilian population. It's the reason they've been able to rampage across Europe. Because the French have been disarmed. The British have been disarmed. The people are afraid of them. But they won't be afraid. They won't be afraid much longer. They won't be afraid much longer. Because the revolution is brewing in Europe. Unfortunately for them, they have no way to defend themselves other than with their fists and their brains. And that is because the Obamas of Europe 
have stolen their guns a long time ago, as they have in Australia, by the way. When a nation takes its masculine pride and attempts to deball it at every turn by drugging it, by debasing it, by inhibiting it, tell me how that nation can survive. No nation in history has ever done to itself what this nation is doing to itself right now. There's no one who can disagree with me. None. If they do, they're mentally insane. When you see article after article telling people who are white to be ashamed of their race, by people who claim not to be racist, if that's not insanity, tell me what is. When you see radical, sick feminists attacking boys and saying large muscles is a sign of aggression, tell me if that's not mental illness. Tell me what is going to be required to save this nation from its own self-destruction. This is a nation that is in the deep throes of an illness. It'd be too easy to call it a mental illness, which I've done in, in 2005 or six with liberalism as a mental disorder. I have, I've redefined the illness America is suffering from as an autoimmune disease. America is suffering the equivalent of political AIDS. It is an autoimmune disease where a retrovirus has invaded the country and has encrypted itself into the DNA of the nation, has replicated itself, and is destroying the nation from within. They're called the Democrat Socialist Party. That is the virus that has invaded this country. That is destroying the nation from within. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Okay, here's a little news story. Report finds female Marines cannot meet some standards for special forces. Now, if you had a commander-in-chief who really cared about the military, he would look at this report and say, all right, some of the women are really brave, they're strong, but they can't cut it in special forces. We're not going to destroy those units because we cannot impose this upon them without lowering the standards and raising the risk of uh, men dying. But not your president. Your psycho in the White House will push this psycho agenda that you will find on a college campus right down to the last drop of his uh, regime. And then some, by the way. A new study says that even the top female troops cannot cut it in the special forces. Let me ask you a little side note. Putin just sent his Spesnats into Syria to kill, to kill, not to negotiate, not to negotiate, not to bring him back to justice to New York City or Moscow in that case, but to find the enemy and kill them. I noticed something when I'm studying the Russian special forces. There are no women in the special forces in Russia. Somehow Putin hasn't been forced to kowtow to the feminists in Russia. Isn't that odd? Isn't that odd what's going on in your country? That's a new study, though. Even striking what appears to be a balance for setting standards, meaning changing standards, will introduce some level of risk across all of these factors, the report by Brigadier General George Smith. Now, having said that, we all know that there are women who are ten times tougher than, mo than many men. We know that. But that's not the point. We're talking about elite combat units like special forces. And we are talking about environments that none of us can even imagine that men have to fight in. We are talking about stresses on the human body that are something the ordinary human being could never take. And to bring females into this, you will find that all the studies show that they put everybody at risk. And the study says winning in war is often only a matter of inches. And unnecessary distraction or any dilution of the combat effectiveness puts the mission and lives in jeopardy, that report stated. Risking the lives of a military unit in combat to provide career opportunities or accommodate the personal desires or interests of an individual is more than bad military judgment. It is morally wrong. You hear this? Now, however, U.S. Navy Secretary the Stooge, Ray Mabus, another schmuck put in by Obama, says to NPR of all places, that studies showing women cannot keep up with men in certain areas could be flawed. This is who Obama handpicked. These sellout punks, these metrosexual losers. This is who he puts in charge of every military branch. And you're wondering why we cannot defeat ISIS? 
after a year of fighting them with our most powerful air force in the world. Obama was not fighting them. He was playing with you. By the way, Israel, which has long integrated women into its military, has reached the same conclusions regarding the most elite units, according to Lieutenant Colonel Yuval Haled. He said, quote, and listen carefully, idiots, women in Israel and the U.S. do very good field operations, but I would say that in the front line with the potential of engaging in close combat, I would still recommend leaving things as they are. No kidding. No kidding. In hand-to-hand -hand combat with ISIS, you mean men do better? Well, how is that possible? Hand-to-hand -hand combat with ISIS, you mean a big, brawny American uh, special forces guy is more suitable than a woman who was put there for affirmative action reasons? I'm shocked. I never would have figured that out. See, they think everything's a college campus, where if things go wrong in the battlefield, the women can blow a whistle and call the ACLU. Well, the real world doesn't work that way, which is why America is dying, incidentally. Well, you know my position on this. Look how I'm going to end the hour. Listen to this headline. Nurse giving workplace flu shots reuse syringes. That's very encouraging. West Windsor, New Jersey. A nurse administering flu shots to dozens of employees of a pharmaceutical company reuse syringes, the State Department of Health said Wednesday. Now, a State Department of Health in New Jersey is not an oxymoron. It's a, it's a laugh line for Seinfeld. Then they go further. There's a low risk of infection. How can there be a low risk of infection if they use the same needle over and over again on people? What? To me, it's a high risk of infection. But we have such a corrupt CDC, they're nowhere to be found. Savage.